Hey, it's Daryl as a service here from the 365 Messi Center show, and uh, we've got our usual awesome host there. Hello, I'm Daniel. Good and you, we've, we've got uh, the lovely Anna Chu, who's um, has joined the show today to, to help um, promote and get some call for content out to this awesome event coming up soon called Microsoft Ignite. You might have heard of it. Anna, <laughs> tell us a bit about it. It's Microsoft's premier um, event for IT professionals and developers this year. So I think we've always thought of Microsoft Build as the traditional developer event, but Microsoft Ignite is really inclusive of developers this year and so you're going to see a lot more developer content than you've ever had before. So that's a mm. big step uh, in a different direction than we've had in the past. So what what are the some of the changes, Anna, this year? You, you mentioned uh, a focus on bringing in development content or presenting development content, mm -hmm. um, a, a new month that the, the event is happening in, in November mm -hmm. instead of uh, September as it has in previous years. What, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that may be a little different this year? The, as opposed to yeah, last? there's a lot that's different. Um, one thing, and I'll try and remember all the different points, like kind of spot <laughs> the difference type of, uh, uh, of game. But um, for the call for content, uh, mm -hmm. we've traditionally only invited our MVP and RD audience to participate. But this year, we're also including MCTs. These are Microsoft <laughs> Certified Trainers. And I believe there's about 8,000 of them worldwide. So quite oh. a huge population yeah. of people that we're also including as part of this community call for content. And when we're looking for content, we're looking for breakout sessions. So they're 45 minutes in length and also 20-minute theaters. And thirdly, exam prep sessions. Mm. So... Uh, we're folding that into the community call for content. So if you're interested in any of those, um, certainly uh, apply. I would say the slight limiting factor is that only MCTs can apply for exam prep sessions. Mm. Just because we don't have as many um, and we want to, you know, um, we're also giving them the added opportunity of, of um, delivering breakouts and theatre sessions. But in terms of what we're looking for in breakouts and theatres, um, we're looking for best practices. We're looking for, um, you know, the mistakes you've made along the way so other attendees can learn from that. We want to hear any stories from a particular vertical or industry or, or, or customer sector. Um, and also, uh, we want to hear stories of, of diversity and inclusion as well and the challenges that you or your colleagues or your community have faced in that area and things that you can share with that community. Uh, I will tell you that the last year's session that was the most popular, most highly rated, was actually Sonia Cuff's session on um, mm. mental burnout and how yes. to recognise it in your peers and your colleagues. And it's surprising because you'd think it's a tech event you would expect tech sessions and we have plenty of those but uh you know mental health and diversity those are really big challenges that we're all facing in the industry mm. and we think it's highly relevant that we bring that to the fore shauna chi does a great job of uh organizing a full track focused on the topics of diversity and inclusion um and we really think that we, we need to make a big call on helping people learn and lean into, into those topics. So, yeah, don't think that we're exclusive to tech. Uh, we certainly are looking to other other topics as well. Yeah, like what I'm hearing there is um, it's less about showing off features because I've always seen Ignite as almost like Microsoft's wedding day every year where it's, ta-da, it's my day, wow. I, get, I get to show all the cool stuff that I've been working on all year, and yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing. So product group are right there and making it look and, and shine and, and, and sometimes they engage uh, customer stories of, of uh, private previews that have been going on, so you get all that kind of context. Mm -hmm. But for, for those of us who are submitting sessions for um, breakout or for community theatre, um, it is all about providing the context and the story, the real world challenges and, and helping people relate to that as they try and see, well, how does this technology apply to me in, in my space? Think of the Microsoft delivered content as the theory and the community mm -hmm. content as the practice, like real right. world scenarios, how it's applied. Um, 
that that type of thing and that's the value that community provides and that's why we are so inclusive of community because we need to balance out our our theory you know because we can talk about how this is supposed to work but the Mm. community is going to keep us on track on how this works in real life keep you real so <laughs> yeah. keeping it real exactly. with community <laughs> that's right exactly have the have your thumb on the pulse of what's going on within totally. uh, the community yeah definitely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you have so, any uh, tips there for for how to uh, choose your topic or create mm-hmm. a, a good abstract that might be really appealing and and help people come <clears throat> away with something practical well, uh, you can always go for a catchy title. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I would aim for simplicity. Um, for starters, just think about that PowerPoint template. And if your title is way too lengthy, if it goes on for like three lines and you know your your title is way too long as it is, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, keep it short, keep it simple, keep it catchy. Uh, your abstract is really where most of your, your, if you've got, gotten their attention with the title, then the next step is really the abstract. And you need to be very clear on what the learning objectives are from mm. your session. Mm. You know, people should be, they're trying to decide between you and five other concurrent sessions on whether to go to that session in person. And to, to compel them, you really want to make it clear they should be able to walk away from you, this session with A, B, and C learnings. Mm. doesn't have to be three. Um, but I would try and keep to three, otherwise you're probably trying to cram too much in. And that is a consistent piece of feedback we get from our evaluations, the verbatim. We read them, every single one of them, uh, and oftentimes people say they were trying to cram way too much into this 20-minute session. So oh, yeah. don't. You know, you've only got 20 minutes. Make the most of that 20 minutes that you can. And if you do have more to say, drive them to your call to action. Think about, like, what you want them to drive to so it could be your website, it could be your LinkedIn page, it could be whatever, um, where they could download more information, you can share that mm. on the tech community. Nice plug there. Oh. Um, my word of warning, uh, and this is from my own personal experience, I hate going to a session, reading that title, reading the abstract, going, okay, cool, I'm going to go there. And I, when I arrive, I get something completely different. Mm. And I'll like rate that session a zero if I could, you know, because... There was a whole bait and switch tactic. You know, I wanted to learn about X and then you gave me a sales pitch about something related to X. And that's Mm. not what I'm here to, if I wanted a sales pitch, I would have called your sales rep, you know. So think about the um, reasons why people come to Ignite. They want to come to Ignite to understand about all the latest announcements, also how everything can work as it applies to their organization. So so think about those learning objectives. Yeah, so you have learning objectives, actionable takeaways, mm-hmm. right, for mm-hmm. the the attendees so that they can not only just learn something and walk away and say, hey, I learned something, but they can actually take that back to their organization and do something with it. You know, what actually happened, right? For mm-hmm. I'm, you're going through an adoption campaign. How, how did that work when you were rolling out teams? How did you... How was that engaging for your employees? How did yeah. your employees, um, f- uh, members of the organization, how did you work with external people, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, real world experiences. Uh, yeah. I think it's a lot of what people are looking for. Yeah. They want to get ideas and be inspired. And in that particular mm. example, talk about results. People love a good stat, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you may be putting yourself out there by being quotable, but at the same time, this is the stuff that's compelling. People want to know mm-hmm. how to unlock the mysteries of, of you know, Teams adoption and how much of the, the how, what percentage of the, your organization could you get to fully use Teams by a certain number of days, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Ooh, setting down that challenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and look on that too, like you don't have to be an adoption expert to cover things around adoption. Uh, we're at an IT Pro conference where all the hard work that you put into to um, implement this technology, turn it on, understand Mm -hmm. it, so often um, it's not used to its fullest potential, but you've got some stories and some things that you could share as a a presenter that's going to help your IT pros and the people around supporting them to to make the most of this, then that's that's always valuable. You don't have to go through some specific methodology about how you got Adcar or whatever to, to work with, with your organization. <laughs> Just 
things that are going to be relatable, it's always going to help the adoption story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Anna, can you talk a little bit about this idea of um, how we're, for your community champions? What what does this look like for Ignite this year? Yeah. So we have spun up uh, a new call for community, calling it Call for Community Champions, mm. and that is specifically looking for unconference hosts. Mm. So these are interactive networking sessions, mm. and the second thing we're looking for are podcasts. So mm. if you host a podcast, have a strong back catalog, um, and you'd love to have the opportunity to broadcast live at Ignite, then we've got some facilities for you to do that. I know <laughs> both of you have utilized this very well. Um, and great facilities, some, good team. Oh, that's right. Great. Yeah, we. you would only need to show up as with your beautiful voices and um, we'll have a, a production crew, we'll have all the equipment available for you to record your content and you can walk away with that file, edit to your heart's content and then publish whenever you like. So that's the podcast center. Mm -hmm. um, but some lucky podcasters uh, will be selected to deliver their podcast live for Microsoft Ignite attendees to listen oh, to. Wow. So wow. a big difference awesome. is that it's a stage versus just a room. So right. think of the podcast booths as like meeting rooms that you can book and four people can fit in there. You've got your mics, you've got, you know, uh, if you want a camera, you can bring that along with you, record your uh, camera uh, camera content there. Then, yeah, um, you can do that. But with the Ignite uh, podcast stage, I haven't figured out the title yet, but um, attendees can actually add that session to the schedule and watch your podcast live. So we're going to choose the ones who get that opportunity based on how many subscribers those podcasts have because this is really uh, i mean it's a perk for the podcasters of course but it's more of a perk for the attendees for them to see oh my gosh this podcast i've been following it for years and now i get to see these people in person and shake yeah. their hand afterwards and it's a real thrill for them so mm -hmm. we want to allow that to happen um yeah and so we're going to do that that's cool. Like we've leveraged an option like that in the past where we can provide the details and those who usually join us live can, yeah. can watch it live in our, our usual space. And yeah. if you are going to submit a, uh, a podcast, definitely, um, you know, look to, to write your abstract or think about your content to make it mm -hmm. appealing for that mm -hmm. option, for totally. interaction with the audience, um, what, what you can potentially cover that's already been announced at Ignite and passing mm -hmm. relevant content um, we found mm -hmm. that was was a, a winning formula to to actually uh, make it an interesting show too yeah totally yeah the objective of these unconference sessions is to drive uh, allow attendees to network with each other so I, I'm sure many of you have been first time conference attendees and you've gone to a conference by yourself and it can be quite a lonely experience but you really don't know how to break the ice or or you lack a formal uh, format to actually, you know, turn up and talk to someone else. And mm. the fact is that you are surrounded by other like-minded individuals, people who are potentially in the same role as you, um, facing the same challenges as you. And it would be such a shame if you left Orlando without making a connection to someone like that. So unconference sessions are designed to uh, help people make that connection to someone that they have not known before, but also could share that same passion. So we could run mm. a um, unconference session about how to stay on top of all the changes that are being pushed through uh, on for Office 365. And mm. there could be a best practice sharing session mm -hmm. on that. Um, you could- you taking this uh, down, Daniel? <laughs> I, I am. Hold on a second. Right? These are just suggestions no, 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 no. that I've seen before. <laughs> we'll blur um, that out so it's out. <laughs> you, can, you can do all the editing you want on this. Uh, <laughs> just don't make me say things that I didn't actually say in that No, no, order, no, no. No right? deep faking. Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> we need you to say a couple of words. They may seem strange, but we'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to fall for that one. We want to run a conference to uh, share life hacks as parents in tech. Like, how do you guys manage your your kids' 
like soccer schedules and mm. things like that. It could be something uh, as sort of, you know, slightly unrelated to, to the topics of Ignite, but mm. still, um, yeah. Interactions but, that key, key aspect of this one, isn't it? Uh, and I know in the past, um, there's been some really successful sessions in that area where it's almost felt like a workshop feel. There's long tables sometimes that have been set up and people get into really amazing discussions and they, they put together the, the thoughts and key points and content and you come back together as a group and share it. That's yeah. the key thing. What can mm -hmm. you do to, to run and facilitate that session where it's not about you giving your big spiel or, or turning mm -hmm. it into yet another right. breakout session? What can I do to include and extract the value from the people in the room so that they're all experiencing that value? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like some of the best uh, events I've been to have always incorporated that type of networking. Uh, I remember 2016, I went to South by Southwest and I can't remember any single session except that one meetup I went to that was connecting other community managers together. And I still, to this day, am Facebook friends with many of those folks and um, call them up from time to time and say, hey, like, you know, how are you doing? What are you working on? And they get to spitball with me on, on, on ideas that they're thinking about and I can do the same for them. And it's that, that's how I like to learn through other people. And I think uh, in this day and age when the pace of learning is so high when it comes yeah. to technology, you can only, like the best way for you to learn is to crowdsource, right? Yeah. Because um, otherwise it's just you trying to troll through docs.microsoft.com <laughs> finding that documentation. Which um, has improved over the years. It's really hey, good. It's much better than it, it used to be. But, um, but it requires a village, right? I mean, you need to have your own village to, to help you navigate all of this. Yep. Exactly. Totally. So yeah, start building your village when you come to Ignite. <laughs> I know that with the, the conference uh, having a really successful time last year with diversity and inclusion, the word mm -hmm. inclusion, it, that's what you're really trying to get get um, involved here with. How do we include yes. those that they've, they're they like their own little island and they pass through the conference and they attend things and take notes? Might be introverts, but what mm -hmm. kind of experience can we provide for them to, to build that network, which we have... Yeah. You know, more and more people, especially the tech community, have experienced the value of exchanging ideas and, and remaining in touch with people after those sorts of events. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I totally understand if your preference is not to want to participate in those sessions. That's perfectly fine. I think that's all comes down to expectation setting. When you go and add an unconference session to your schedule, you should know ahead of time that you, you're going to be you, you can't just sit back and relax. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be involved or, or called upon in some way. Um, but, you know, we do want to try and facilitate more formal versions, formal settings to, to allow for networking and connection, aside from RC experts and, and have, hosting those networking drinks. Because not everyone likes to drink, and that's perfectly fine. But we need to, like, actually dr and drive some, like, organization around the, the topics that people might bond over, you know, because yeah. otherwise yeah. it's kind of a free-for-all. That's right. Do you remember those little tables last year, Daniel, with, uh, I think it was in the diversity and inclusion area, and they were like mini meetups where you could yes. suggest a topic. Um, yes. I remember um, it was yeah. uh, Mark Anderson, um, Susan Hanley, and a couple of others were, were gathering around to talk about um, being an individual contractor or starting yep. their own business. Yeah. I, was, I was in that. I, yes, I remember... Uh, those those tables were fantastic, and every time I went by there, they were packed, and you, it was really hard to get a seat at because um, it is people want to find out, they want to learn from people who've experienced it, right? And mm -hmm. it's not about um, in those cases, in, in those situations, it wasn't about PowerPoint. It wasn't about it was about what? Come on, from the straight from the hip. No one's recording this, and yeah, uh, just tell me what? How did you do it? And how do you deal with the issues? And you know, be be a little bit transparent with, with yes. all of those. Those are so amazing. Yeah. So this is the evolution of that. We called them idea swaps right. last year, right. and I think one of the the challenges was that it was it didn't have. Um, quite literal walls and we are gonna we're not going to <laughs> limit yourself with walls um but it got a little too crazy it i did. mean there were yeah. some of these tables that were designed for like 12 people and then 30 people showed up and yeah. so there was a lot of yelling not because it was a very 
you know, animated discussion, but just because so people can just hear. And, yeah. 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 And so we want to, we're going to have specific spaces designed just for unconferences. Um, and so basically we're doing away with the meetup concept we, we used to have and doing unconferences, having mm. them in specific spaces on the show floor. Um, and we will have a reservation system in place so that if you add it to your schedule, you have a reservation and we will have a walk-up line. So if people didn't make their reservation, we can let the walk-up people go and, cool. and fill in the, the, the spare seats. So, yeah, I'm really excited about unconferences this year. I think we're going to do some really wonderful sessions. Uh, we'll certainly call upon people who uh, did in, in idea swaps last year. Um, right. I think Sue Hanley's one was really great. We could t totally do that one again. Mm. Um, yeah, because these are things that people care about and are curious about. And when they, I would love for them to not only come away with a, a really helpful tip, but also a connection to someone else who's also going through that journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and just just to your point that you made earlier about the conference that you went to, this that for me last year, that's one of the highlights was mm -hmm. was sitting at that table with all of those people in that packed space. But that those conversations, I remember them. Do I yeah. remember every word, every sentence, or or even all you know four or five bullet points of of uh, the presentations I went to? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But I remember yeah. that conversation. If you are really focused on sessions uh, and you have serious FOMO because <laughs> there are so many sessions happening concurrently, we are recording every single breakout and theater session and we're making every single slide pending the people making the slides available to us, <laughs> making them available on the tech community. So um, we do a lot of work to make sure that um, you all get on-demand uh, access to those slides um, and those recordings, even if you didn't turn up to Orlando. I mean, the and the reason behind this is Microsoft has invested so much time and energy into making this great content. We want the whole world to know about it. And so mm -hmm. we're not going to limit it to only people who uh, could afford the time and the expense of going to a week-long event in Orlando. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people can... They, they are struggling to learn and they want to get it from the horse's mouth, ideally. Mm -hmm. So we're making all of that available in the tech community again. Uh, that was our, our plan last year and we executed on that and we plan to do that again. What's the value of us, uh, of you even coming to Ignite if all of these sessions are available virtually? It's that networking. It's that one-to-one -one yeah. connection um, to someone who uh, you know could be who have learned could be have learned something that you are learning right now. It could also be mm -hmm. uh, uh, you to meet your tech superhero. It could be meeting <laughs> Jeff Teeper or Jeffrey Snova, Mark Rosinovich, Julia White. It could be a whole bunch of different people. Um, uh, and it, these people are quite approachable. You'll be surprised um, when we hosted a uh, meet Jeffrey Snova. Um, community social last year he was there until the very end till the very last person that Q um, got wow. his selfie you Commitment. know so so committed um, nice. and these this is something that I love about this community is that you know they will make the time for people um, and it'd be a real shame if you missed out on that um, if you didn't come to ignite so please come <laughs> here here actually there is one other thing that we haven't covered yet yes is there is drum roll yeah. please Community <laughs> reporters. Well, hey. uh, yes. So uh, from one alum, Dan, uh, Daryl, um, I mean, this is a great opportunity. Would, would you not say? Like, how, how yes. what was your experience as a community reporter? Uh, well, yeah, uh, being in the first wave. Um, the, the experience is, first of all, you get to be part of a, a professionally run day to begin with. You are part of day one at Ignite and helping to run the show and experiencing that is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. It pushes you uh, further into um, extending what you're comfortable with and what you're capable of. and. Mm -hmm. And it sort of helps to raise that confidence level. But uh, ongoing from that throughout the week, it's it's an opportunity again to connect with a whole lot of people. And uh, you, it's almost like you've got this press card that's sort of on your hat <laughs> or on your, you know, and yeah. that you can literally, yeah. um, you know, be, okay, there's the, the raising your personal profile thing. But think of what I found was really um, amazing was being a conduit, I guess, to helping guide conversation along. Mm -hmm. and and so 
the conversation points that I might be able to raise or just having the boldness to walk up to someone and say, hey, look, tell me your story um, was was a, a, an amazing thing. So I, I've really enjoyed seeing the evolution of that in wave two with last year. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so we're doing it again this year, but of course, uh, nothing is exactly the same as it was in previous <laughs> no. years. Um, so, so no drones? No, well, I'm not making any promises here. No, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> um, that's that's always a challenge. Just it is, it is. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are holding auditions for the community reporters. So in previous years, we've just looked at a list of MVPs and RDs and thought, who would be an amazing reporter? But this year, we're going to hold auditions. So. Um, and we're opening it to everyone. You don't have to be an MVP. You don't have to be an MCT um, or an RD. You can be anybody. Um, of course, cool. you know you have to be over the age of 21, <laughs> just so you can be in the facility. But uh, besides that, there are no other restrictions. Uh, we're lo really looking for people who are enthusiastic, love being in front of a camera, um, are good at thinking on their feet, because it's a live show. Anything can happen. <laughs> A major difference as well, major difference number two, is that this is not going to be just a day one live stream. It is all week, five days. So that's quite a time commitment. Um, and not just for the week itself, but also the preparation work that goes into it. Um, it's, I mean, you know, Daryl, you're very aware of this. Like we spent many, many hours over phone calls across different time zones. Yeah, to... Just a few early morning uh, meetings. Hmm. Oh, sorry. I still feel bad <laughs> about that. But those were really great discussions because yeah. then we get to hear from you on, oh, like, wouldn't this be a great idea for a segment? Why don't we, you know, get uh, this person and this person involved and we'll ask them, like, you know, where can you find the best bacon on in 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 Orlando? Um, I don't know. Wasn't the uh, the the Brad Anderson golf cart uh, something that came out of that? Yeah, yeah, the, that was uh, wasn't maybe it was your year, Daryl. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. Uh, Brad Anderson had his golf cart and he just drove it around the <laughs> convention center roundabout, um, with just recording people and talking about. I don't know. I don't even remember it, what it was. He was interviews. About. It, it would it would take people yeah. and and basically they'd ask him some questions and he'd answer and it was all all filmed. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it was like an ask yeah. Brad Anderson anything. Oh yeah, right? that's all right. That's right. That's what it was. That was really cool. I really like that. It's a very collaborative exercise with our reporters, and so it's a time commitment um, because it's such it's such a big time commitment because of the week long live stream. The the main stipulation is that if you're going to be uh, committed to the community reporter role, you cannot uh, speak at the breakouts or theaters just because you, we would be stressing you out. Um, you'd be spending, and we want everybody when they're delivering their breakouts in theaters to do as much prep work as they need to get ready, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of work that even goes into networking with the attendees before the session and after the session. There's a lot of Q&A that goes on with that. So we don't want to add that additional pressure to being part of the community reporter crew. Good so, choice. So yeah. call for content, where do people go to, to submit for being a reporter or submitting for, for sessions or podcasts or mm -hmm. um, the unconference uh, sessions? Yeah, we have a beautiful new website. Uh, if you go to Microsoft Ignite, uh, you go to the main Ignite homepage and there is a section called Community. So you scroll down, look for the Community section and when you hit that page, you'll see the three links to apply for those roles right there in front of you. There's the Community Content and that's where you apply for breakouts, theatres and exam prep. prep prep sessions the mm. second one is uh, call for community champions and that is for unconference hosts and uh podcasts then the third one is community reporters um yeah so that Brilliant. is uh closing august 4th so don't procrastinate if you're interested right now then s set aside an hour to work on your submission right now do it because do it <laughs> time will will go away like you will always lose time and it is very clear when you're reading these submissions when someone was uh you know really lacking inspiration just wanted to get it in there to meet the deadline um 
we want that amazing title and abstract to really shine so that we can easily select accept, you know, like make it easy for us by putting the effort to making them really great sessions. Brilliant. Sounds great. Brilliant. Thank you, Anna, for uh, for coming on today. Appreciate it. Yes, Definitely. and I look forward to reading your submissions. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, and for those of you who also, uh, you know, catch the show, uh, you've heard it. There's an opportunity there if you if you plan to get to Ignite or you want to be at Ignite, you could be a mm -hmm. community reporter. Sure. Uh, and look, you submit your sessions and and really get in there. And and as a community, let's make this an awesome event. Um, and thank you again, Anna, for for joining Regarding Three Six Five to help get that word out. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Thank okay. you. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.